Okay, hi there, and welcome to a video looking at competitiveness policies. Uh, this is an example exam answer for A-level macroeconomics. And here's our question. With reference to a country of your choice, evaluate policies that might be most effective in improving competitiveness. Just before I take you through uh, my suggested answer, some key advice for essay questions in A-level. Uh, this is particularly for Edexcel students, but relevant to other boards as well. It's really important to put application in your answer. It's impossible now to get to level four analysis without some application. Contextualized evaluation also important. Don't just write pure generic evaluation points. Try to contextualize it to the question. Um, depth is much more important than breadth. You never, never need more than two well-developed points for each question you answer. Build depth of analysis through a change of reasoning and also through diagrams. You don't need an introduction in a 30-minute essay. You haven't got time to do that. It's good technique in longer essays, but this is an exam and there's no point introducing lengthy introductions and lengthy definitions. But you will need a final conclusion. You'll need a final recent comment to move into level three for evaluation. So I'm going to be looking to make two points in this question on policies to improve competitiveness. Make two points, evaluate two points, and then come to a final reasoned conclusion. Competitiveness is the ability, successfully, to sell goods and services overseas at, at, uh, at a profit in overseas markets. I've chosen Poland as my example. Uh, it's always good to build up contextual information on one or two countries of your choice. Poland is inside the single market, but actually maintains their own floating currency, the Zloty. And one quarter of Polish exports go to Germany. Good application there. So one policy that might help improve the price competitiveness of Poland <coughs> is for the central bank, perhaps in Poland, to try to manipulate the exchange rate to intervene in the currency market, uh, perhaps by reducing interest rates or by directly selling the Polish currency, there's a lot in buying euros, with a view to depreciating their currency. Why? Well, because a weaker currency makes Polish products relatively cheaper in Western European markets, in Germany, in France and Holland, for example. That might lead to expenditure switching effects as the demand for Polish exports goes up and also because demand for imports contracts as they become more expensive. Consequence of this, a good chain of reasoning connective there, is that Polish exporters will make more profits and this could then help them to increase their investment, which in turn could lead to increased productivity, which would help to maintain competitiveness in the long term. So my core point here is that the Polish Central Bank could try to achieve a competitive depreciation of the of the Zloty against the Euro. That's my first application and analysis point. Then I need to evaluate the point I've made. That's really quite important. So although in theory a depreciation of the Zloty might improve competitiveness in Poland, in practice, in reality, the benefits of a weaker currency might be uh, eroded, reduced by some of the negative consequences of a fall in the currency. For example, Poland imports things like animal feed, fertilizers, vehicle parts. They import pharmaceuticals from other EU countries. Good application there. So when the external value of the currency goes down, the domestic price of imports goes up. This leads to analysis, a deterioration in the terms of trade. Poland will essentially have to export more to pay for those imports. And crucially, it can and does lead to an increase in cost, push, inflation, an inward shift of the short and aggregate supply curve. And the higher inflation uh, cuts real incomes of consumers and also reduces the profits of Polish companies. Higher relative inflation can therefore make Poland less competitive inside the single market. So can you see what we're trying to do here? We're trying to build two points and some, some chunky analysis and some substantial evaluation. Analysis diagram would help support the point I've made, showing that uh, a depreciation of this lottie could lead to cost push inflation. What I've tried to do here also is make, make sure the diagram is contextual. This is the general price level for Poland. It's the real GDP for Poland, in which shift there of aggregate supply. My second, my second point, my second policy, uh, is in this slide. A second approach to improving competitiveness could be to introduce supply-side reforms to the Polish economy. Poland, uh, use a bit of application here, was once a transition economy, moving away from 
socialism. A variety of market friendly policies were introduced, including cuts in corporation tax and income tax. Down there, I'm contrasting Poland's taxes on income, <clears throat> basic rate 18%, high rate 32%, contrasted with 20% and 40% in the UK. Then build your analysis. If you cut income tax rates and corporation tax rates, that encourages an increase in business startups. In theory, it encourages inflows of foreign investment into Poland. That investment increases the country's capital stock, which increases labour productivity, which in turn helps to increase real per capita incomes. And inward investment also creates extra supply side capacity, <clears throat> some of which can be exported. Indeed, foreign owned firms are said to account for over half of Poland's exports. The revenue from transnational businesses locating and manufacturing in Poland also generates extra tax revenues for the government. So my second point is that supply side reforms, in particular tax cuts, could make Poland more competitive. However, you then need to evaluate that point. Okay, really key exam technique. Market friendly supply side policies can improve competitiveness, but they can also come into conflict with other macro objectives. There's my evaluation point. For example, if you cut direct taxes and incomes and profits, that could lead to more inequality and relative poverty. Higher inequality can actually damage competitiveness because if there's a bigger gap between lower middle class and poor households compared to the rest of society, that means that fewer people perhaps can afford education, fewer people can afford the relevant health care. And my point here is if, if education suffers, then the country will not be improving its human capital and that can lead to higher unemployment and ultimately lower productivity, which is a key factor affecting competitiveness. Again, take a look at this slide and think about the structure of the answer. If you want to take a, a screenshot or something of this and put it into your notes, that would be great. What we're trying to do here is build our analysis, but then evaluate the point we've made. And we've done that twice, and that's all you can do in 30 minutes. Okay, It's not a, it's not a lengthy uh, university-style essay. It's a 30-minute 25 marker. But we do need to finish off with a conclusion. Your exam board will tell you roughly how much they expect from a final reason conclusion. Uh, this uh, this question uh, has this, uh, I offer this conclusion to this question. In the long run, competitiveness is mainly determined by the supply side performance of a country. Therefore, I would argue, coming to a sort of personal view here, that Poland should use policies that increase investment in education to build up human capital and also encourage more women into the active labour force. Poland actually does extremely well in the PISA rankings, the tests for maths and science and things. It's exceptional at computer programming and investment in early years, secondary higher education provides the best platform for improving non-price competitiveness. Go back to the question. In areas such as innovation, adoption of and exploitation of artificial intelligence, robotics, which will matter in the years to come. So my conclusion is that, in fact, instead of tax cuts, Poland needs to increase investment in education as its long-run strategy. So there we go. Before we finish, there's the PISA rankings. If you want to take a look at where Poland ranks, uh, PISA has uh, this is the average score of math, science and reading. Uh, PISA stands for the Programme for International Student Assessment. It's, a, it's an objective test of uh, student attainment in math, science and reading. Poland came in 19th in the latest data. Uh, the UK came in 23rd, so the UK is actually below that of Poland. And the United States came in 31st. So really interesting that those countries are right at the top there. Singapore, Hong Kong, Japan, uh, Canada's up there. Finland, South Korea, those countries have very high scores and are widely regarded as some of the most competitive countries in the world. Okay, there's my answer to this question. Thanks for joining in.